There are powerful engines. <laughs> And then there's the Waukesha 6 SRKR. Here we have a, an original, very rare fire truck engine. It's a Waukesha model 6 SRKR. This 517 cubic inch inline six was built so tough that some are still running reliably after over half a century of heavy service. But here's the thing. It was never meant for trucks and that's exactly why it became legendary. While other manufacturers chased the highway market, Waukesha built an engine that could run buried in dust, soaked in oil field grime, and pushed to maximum load and triple-digit heat. This is the story of America's most overbuilt diesel, an engine that was useless for trucking, but unstoppable at everything else. To understand why the big block Waukesha 6 was simultaneously brilliant and never destined for the highway, you need to understand where it came from. Waukesha Motor Company wasn't a truck engine manufacturer. They were industrial engine specialists who built power plants for applications where failure meant catastrophe. Founded in 1906 in Waukesha, Wisconsin, the company earned its reputation by powering oil rigs, generators, fire trucks, and heavy industrial equipment that needed to run continuously for years without major maintenance. Their engines were the kind of machines you could run at full load in hot fields and still count on to start the next morning. When Waukesha developed the 6 SRKR in the 1930s, they didn't water down that philosophy for other markets. They doubled down on it. This was, at its heart, a stationary industrial engine that also found its way into large specialty vehicles like fire trucks, airport crash tenders, and massive cranes. In those roles, it was practically a legend. This big block inline six displaced 517 cubic inches and was naturally aspirated. It was part of the company's Super Transport 6 family, a line of engines that pushed Waukesha's already tough designs into even heavier service classes. The engine featured a massive cast iron block with deep skirt construction and seven main bearings supporting a forged steel crankshaft designed for continuous operation under maximum load. Where other manufacturers were beginning to experiment with lighter alloys and more efficient castings, Waukesha doubled down on sheer strength. The cylinder heads were individual units, one per cylinder, which made valve adjustments and repairs easier in the field. However, this design added significant weight compared to conventional one-piece heads, which is one of the reasons its suitability was limited for highway truck applications. The individual cylinder head design wasn't just about serviceability, it was about ultimate durability. Each head was a separate casting with its own intake and exhaust ports, allowing for precise control of combustion chamber geometry. The heads were secured with massive through bolts that extended from the very top of the engine all the way down to the main bearing caps, creating a solid, unified structure that could withstand extreme cylinder pressures without distortion. The block itself was a masterpiece of industrial casting, featuring cylinder walls thicker than typical highway diesels. It extended well below the crankshaft centerline, creating a rigid foundation that eliminated flex under load. Inside the connecting rods were forged steel units, so overbuilt they could have passed for components from a ship's engine. The crankshaft was perhaps the most impressive piece of the entire assembly. Forged from a single billet of high carbon steel, it featured massive main and rod journals with generous fillet radii to distribute stress. It was dynamically balanced to extremely tight tolerances, closer to racing standards than industrial use, which gave the big Waukesha an almost eerie smoothness when it was running in its preferred low RPM range. Fuel delivery was pure industrial thinking. Instead of adapting lighter, cheaper automotive-style injection systems, Waukesha used heavy-duty mechanical injection equipment. Each injector could be individually timed and adjusted, and the pump was a precision-built mechanical unit with individual plungers for each cylinder. Driven by a common camshaft, the pump could be set up with a governor to hold rock-steady RPM under changing loads, perfect for generators, pumps, or machinery that couldn't afford even a momentary speed drop. In its most common trim, it produced around 126 horsepower at 2250 RPM and roughly 360 pound-foot of torque at just 600 RPM. That last number tells you everything about its character. 
This wasn't an engine that sprinted, it pulled. And it would pull all day, all week, all year if you kept fuel in it, and change the oil once in a while. For lifting and hauling at low speeds, it was exceptional. For moving freight cross-country at 60 miles an hour? Not so much. The cooling system was designed with the same worst-case scenario mindset. Oversized radiators, heavy-duty water pumps, and wide cooling passages in the block and heads kept temperatures stable even in blistering heat. The water pump itself was a massive cast-iron piece with bronze impellers and mechanical seals designed for service intervals measured in years. Lubrication followed suit. The oiling system had the kind of capacity you'd expect in a marine engine with oversized filters and coolers to match. In many industrial applications, this engine could run for hundreds of hours between oil changes, far longer than a typical truck diesel of its era. The gear-driven oil pump kept a steady supply of oil flowing, delivering up to 60 PSI underload and never letting pressure drop dangerously low, even at idle underload. Even the camshaft was built to last made of solid steel with hardened lobes that could run thousands of hours without measurable wear. The entire valve train was set up for minimal adjustment, because the less often someone had to open it up in the field, the better. It's worth noting that this inline 6 didn't just have a reputation for durability. It had a certain mystique. In the communities that ran them, these engines were talked about with the same respect given to ship engines or heavy locomotive power plants. They were trusted, predictable, and almost impossible to kill. In a crane or a pumper truck, you could lug it down until it was barely turning over and it would still find a way to dig in and keep going. Despite its impressive specifications and bulletproof construction, the big Waukesha 6 was never going to be a highway champion. The mismatch with over-the-road trucking wasn't a matter of poor engineering, it was simply a case of an industrial engine being placed in an environment it was never designed for. The first and most obvious difference was weight. That deep skirt block, the massive forged crankshaft, and the one-head per cylinder layout made for a machine that could run for decades under constant load. But those same traits also made it incredibly heavy. In the trucking world, every extra pound sitting over the front axle is a pound you can't haul out back for profit. This trade-off alone would have made fleet buyers think twice before specking it for long-haul service. Then there was the power curve. In its natural habitat, whether in a crane, fire truck, or generator, the Waukesha 6 was tuned to deliver its torque low and hold it steady. It could hit its peak torque just above idle and then keep pulling with little change in RPM. That's perfect when you need smooth, predictable power for hours on end. But highway work demands a wider power band and quick responses for climbing grades, merging into traffic, and overtaking. This engine simply didn't play in that RPM range. Fuel efficiency also told a part of the story. In industrial service, fuel economy isn't measured the same way as it is in long-haul trucking. Reliability, fuel tolerance, and the ability to operate under poor conditions often matter far more. Waukesha designed this engine to run on a range of fuel qualities and keep going. Great for remote job sites, but not a selling point for fleets watching fuel budgets over hundreds of thousands of highway miles. Service support was another factor. Industrial shops were set up to work on these engines with the right tools, parts, and knowledge. Roadside truck stops weren't. That meant any mechanical trouble away from home could mean long downtime and expensive transport to a facility that knew the Waukesha's quirks. Lastly, packaging was an obstacle. The big inline 6 had generous cooling needs and wasn't shy about the space it required. In a skid-mounted frame or the wide-open bay of a fire truck, there was room for the oversized radiator and airflow it demanded. In a highway tractor, fitting it in meant custom mounts, plumbing changes, and cooling upgrades, Extra cost and complexity, most fleets weren't eager to absorb. In the end, the Waukesha 6 didn't fail in trucks. It simply never really entered the race. It stayed in the environments where it belonged, doing the work it was designed for and doing it better than almost anything else in its class. If the big Waukesha 6 seemed out of place on the highway, it was right at home in the environments it was built for. This engine was designed for jobs where stopping wasn't an option, where failure meant more than inconvenience.
In fire trucks, the Waukesha 6 gave departments the confidence that their rigs would start instantly and run flawlessly under heavy load. Even after sitting idle for weeks, these were engines that could be brought up to full operating speed in seconds, then run at governed RPM for hours while feeding high-pressure pumps without a hiccup. In airport crash tenders, the same traits meant they could drive to the scene, run foam systems at full capacity, and keep going until the job was done. The industrial world was an even bigger stage. Oil fields used the Waukesha 6 to power pumps and drilling equipment in remote locations where parts and service could be days away. In these settings, the engine's conservative tuning, overbuilt components, and tolerance for varying fuel quality weren't just advantages. They were the difference between steady production and costly downtime. Heavy cranes and construction machinery also made good use of the Waukesha 6's torque-heavy personality. When lifting tons of steel or moving earth, quick revving horsepower isn't the priority. What matters is the ability to hold torque at low RPM without overheating or wearing out prematurely, and that's where this engine excelled. Municipal power plants and emergency generators were another natural fit. The Waukesha 6 could run at a fixed speed for days or even weeks during extended outages, delivering consistent output without drifting from its set RPM. That kind of stability wasn't just impressive, it was essential for systems that couldn't afford fluctuations in power. In all of these roles, the Waukesha 6's sheer mass, heavy castings, and robust cooling weren't drawbacks. They were strengths. The weight that penalized payload on a truck chassis was irrelevant when the engine was bolted to a skid frame. The oversized cooling passages that were difficult to fit under a truck hood were easy to accommodate in an open industrial bay. And in the communities that worked with them, these engines inspired a rare kind of loyalty. Operators knew they could push them hard, hour after hour, with no drama. Mechanics appreciated the thoughtful serviceability of the individual head design, which let them isolate and repair a single cylinder without tearing down the whole engine. Fleet managers valued the fact that, if properly maintained, these engines could run for decades before needing a major overhaul. The Waukesha 6 wasn't just another power plant. It was a tool that made impossible jobs possible. It thrived in places where compromise wasn't acceptable and where the only measure of success was whether the work got done without interruption. On the highway, it was mismatched. In its element, it was nearly unbeatable. Looking back at the Waukesha 6, it's tempting to frame a brief and troubled highway chapter. The truth is simpler. This was an industrial engine through and through, and the highway path was never its mission. The fundamental engineering was sound, arguably overbuilt for stationary and heavy equipment duty. And that same focus made it a mismatch for over-the-road priorities. Had Waukesha chosen to chase the highway market, it would have required more than small tweaks. A lighter block and accessories, packaging changes for tighter bays and larger radiators, a broader mid-range power curve, and fuel efficiency targets suited to long-haul fleets would have been baseline requirements. Just as important, a service network geared to truck stops, not plants and pump stations, would have had to exist to keep rigs moving. Timing didn't push it off the highway. Product focus did. Through the eras when on-road diesels moved toward lighter, more efficient designs and later stricter standards, Waukesha's big inline six stayed on its own track. Low RPM torque, governor steady operation, and durability first. The traits that earned it loyalty in firehouses, cranes, and oil fields weren't the same ones fleets were buying. By the time modern on-road emissions demands defined how engines were built, adapting an industrial big-bore straight six like this would have meant fundamental redesign. That wasn't a failure, just a recognition that the engine already excelled where it was meant to work. Today, the Waukesha 6 lives on mostly in the memories of operators who ran them hard and in the few units that still hum along in remote industrial service. Quiet proof of how tough the original design really was. For those who worked with the engine in its element, it remains a symbol of American industrial might at its peak. It was built without compromise, designed to outlast everything around it, and engineered with a confidence that bordered on arrogance.
The fact that it never became a highway product doesn't diminish its technical achievements. It simply shows that the right engine in the wrong arena will always stay on the road not taken.